I've been on the lookout for uh, parts for the Ektapro high-speed camera lately, and I recently came across a lot of high-speed camera parts on eBay that included, most importantly, the keypad and imager cable. Those were the two things I was missing to get that uh, Ektapro high-spec processor running. Uh, this lot also included an imager in somewhat bad shape. Uh, someone broke, broke this connector off, it's got a bunch of dirt on it. Also included uh, an Ektapro EM processor. Uh, let's see if that works. And strangely enough, it also included cables and a keypad for an Ektapro 4540 system. And another, in another auction from the same seller, uh, an, an Ektapro 4540 camera. That ended about $20, the rest of the stuff was 50 and then I think it was over 100 shipping because all this stuff weighs about uh, 90 pounds. Okay, the first order of business to get this running is to figure out whether this uh, modular jack going between the keypad and the processor needs uh, straight through wiring or uh, flipped because I don't want to reverse the polarity and blow up this unobtainium keypad. I put a little bit of effort a while ago into reverse engineering the protocol for this keypad but I didn't really feel it was worth the time given uh, all the other projects I was working on so I just sort of put this on the shelf until I could find a uh, keypad like this and luckily one did come up. Yeah, I put a bit of effort into reverse engineering the protocol on this keypad but it's not uh, anything simple. I believe uh, Mike's Electric Stuff uh, reverse engineered one of these, a similar system, a while back. Uh, take a look at, a, at the link on his website. There's quite there's a huge amount involved in reverse engineering it, like uh, reading out the uh, ROMs and disassembling it, because the, apparently the protocol is quite involved and has lots of has acknowledges and things like that. And I tried sending it just a bunch of random uh, different values over the over the. RS-232 uh, protocol it uses, but it wouldn't... I got one thing to respond with a knack, but uh, nothing else, so I pretty much just gave up. Now, how does this open? Let's just get that one last bit out. There we go. Oh, wow. That's pretty complicated. What do we have in here? MC6809, looks like the main CPU various ROMs that looks like an H that's a looks like a, a um, LCD controller yeah this is quite involved just for a keypad the construction on this is also quite interesting the front is just made of rubber and it just slips over the uh, printed circuit board I believe we can just pull this apart uh, maybe not with the lens, but on this side, yeah, it just slips over and there's the uh, membrane keypad. Huh. It's an interesting way of building it. Looks like the cable is straight through because the second pin, uh, pin 2 from the right, is ground on the processor. And on the... Uh, And on the keypad, uh, the same thing is true. The second pin, second pin from the right, is grounded, but not any of the other ones. And that's opposite of uh, phone, normal phone uh, cords. Like these extension cords for telephones, these are uh, are reversed. So this would probably blow the thing up if you tried that. So let's connect that up. Oh, these huge cables are so satisfying to plug in. <laughs> okay. And we'll try that again. And it seems to be working. We're getting something. I aim the camera up by lights. The uh, keypad's displaying something. Let's get a lens on this thing. This all seems to be working very nicely. Uh, the imager has a very uh, industrial look with that huge uh, connector on it. Uh, right now I've just got it aiming over here at this uh, bit of cable, and the image is actually really, really good. I'm surprised. Uh, let's try taking some shots. Uh, I've got a bit of water here. We can just do some classic uh, drops into water. There's quite a few options on this. There, uh, there's different record modes. You can have uh, record uh, just 
record and stop. There's uh, record and loop until stopped and start recording from a trigger. Uh, we have record rate selections. As you can set the different set different uh, region of interest sizes. Uh, you can go to uh, full frame. You can divide it up into different uh, sizes to get higher frame rates. I get uh, one quarter frame. I believe you can go all the way up to four thousand frames per second, and I think this would go all the way down to. There's a sixth frame. I think it'll do one twelfth frame even at up to twelve thousand frames per second. And with that high speed mode, it goes into some sort of weird. Uh, it just divides it up to twelve different images, but at lower record rates, it actually saves them as separate uh, frames. On the second page, uh, I'm not sure what ROC is. There's different things for external sync, pixel, uh, I'm not quite sure what that is either, but changes a... Hmm. If we go up to the screen, that's interesting. If we change PIX down to 4, it looks like it just changes the number of levels. It's just changing the number of bits. Like That's 2-bit, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 bit. I'm not sure exactly why you would want to do that. ID is just a number displayed on the screen. Uh, border turns that on and off. Cable sets the, uh, I'm assuming it changes some of the clock delays inside the system because when you have longer cables the signal has to go out to the camera then come back and if you change that it sort of changes I think how it samples the video. It just happens that 100 foot seems to work the same as 15. What I think is happening is that's a one uh, the round trip delay for that extra the 100 150 15 foot to 100 foot cable is uh, 85 foot difference, and that's about one clock period or 300 nanoseconds. So it just samples at one clock later. You can see a, a bar on the right of one one pixel of invalid data. And on the third page, you can just turn on and off a centering thing. You can, I think you can move it around. Gamma controls the curve for uh, how the value output from the image sensor is uh, is displayed. Basically, when it's for lower values of gamma, in this case, uh, mid ranges of the image are displayed at a higher value. And I believe one is actually a linear representation, which is not correct. This shows grays uh, way too dark. A more typical value would be something like 0.6. That would display sort of a more uh, in a more typical way. Um, play format. I'm not quite sure what that is. VC, uh, VCR mode. I believe uh, this uh, the output. Of this uh, processor can control. There's a there's an output for an IR. Uh, basically an IR blaster to control a VCR. So when you press uh, VCR copy on this thing, it would uh, tell and send a signal for an external VCR to start recording, play the output out the video out, and uh, so that would be saved to tape. This was before you had, uh, before, before complete computers were commonplace. I think uh, the system was released in the uh, early 90s, 1990 I think. Although there is a GPIB or IEEE 488 which you can download uh, frames out of, but apparently that's very, very slow. And judging from the record time and the frame size of uh, 240 by 192 and the frame rate, this has about 256 megabytes of RAM in it, which was a huge amount back in 1990. Okay, let's try recording a drop here. Let's try centering that better. There we go, stop. Now we should be able to play back. Okay, let's get support some different playback rates. Let's see if we can go faster. Picking it up. Oh, there we go. Let's go backwards. Slow down. Slow down. Come on. The keys are a bit sticky on this. Oh, nice. That's a really nice image.
This is labeled as a high gain imager, and there's a little switch under here for the gain. Uh, let's see what that does. This is on normal gain right now, so if we turn it up, I expect it to be much, uh, yeah, I guess much brighter. Some little artifact occurs there. Yeah, if we close the iris down a bit, there is about the same exposure as we were before, but that's about one uh, click on the iris from f over 5.6 to f over 4. If we turn it off, yeah, it's much darker, but the noise is also reduced. Okay, let's see if we can get this high-spec processor running. It's pretty much the same thing, except it's smaller and has more, mem more memory. I believe the, uh, everything should be fully compatible, although the keypad we'll have to see. No, it doesn't seem to work with this keypad. And there's some beep, like it's complaining about something. Although it does come up like it did before when we were looking at this. I just tried it a second time with no imager, and this time uh, it did come up. So let's uh, see if we can figure out what's going on. Maybe it's just a bad connection on this. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, it seems to be just a bad connection on the RJ45 or RJ11. There we go. It's set to a rather low frame rate and we have recorded them 78 seconds. Let's see if we can change that. What do we have here? 500 is 1000. 19.6 seconds. Yeah, this has a lot more RAM. The fixed pattern noise in the imager is a little bit different as well. Is that high gain? Yes, that was low gain. I wonder if it's uh, calibrated to go with a specific imager because this this is the one that came with this system. The noise on this imager is a little bit different, although uh, I can't say it's better. Uh, I'd actually say it's worse than the other one. The other one's the high gain imager, so that one's preferable anyway. These things definitely kick out a lot of heat. Uh, this one, the X-Pro EM, draws 215 watts, and the high spec processor draws exactly the same, 215, 214 watts. So, out of all this stuff, we have one working high-speed camera system, and we would have two if we could find another a keypad and imager cable. Stay tuned for teardowns of both these processors, uh, the X-Pro EM camera head and the uh, 4540 camera heads. Anyway, hope you like this video. Thanks for watching.